Welcome back to our Awesome Case of the Month series. Feel free to comment below and I'll attempt to address any questions or concerns. This case starts with a 13-year-old male presented to the emergency department with knee pain. He was reportedly running while playing outside and impacted the branch of a downed tree with his right knee. His vitals were documented to be stable. His exam displayed pain with palpation manipulation of the right knee. Edema was noted with a high suspicion for a joint effusion. A minor abrasion was identified, yet no laceration. The knee was stable, yet the patient was unable to perform a straight leg raise on the affected side. Given the patient's age and his pain, it was difficult to definitively determine whether his extensor mechanism was intact, and it was felt that pain might have been playing a role in his lack of ability to perform a straight leg raise. As radiographs were ordered, the treatment team utilized bedside ultrasound to better clarify the clinical picture. The first image I'm going to show is the view, which I feel is often the easiest to interpret, even for those with limited musculoskeletal ultrasound experience. This view is obtained in the midline of the right femur with the linear high-frequency probe aligned with the long axis of the femur. The quadriceps tendon is seen with its bright linear fibers, which approach their insertion point on the patella at the right of the screen. Here's another view in a similar long axis orientation. As you have likely identified, this view utilizes more depth than the previous image. We again see the bright fibers of the quadriceps tendon and the patella to the right. However, with increased depth, we now see a large joint effusion deep to the quadriceps tendon. Here is a still shot showing all relevant anatomy. Take a second to attempt identification of the important structures. I have highlighted the quadriceps tendon in blue. The fibular structure of the tendon can be identified. Muscles and tendons classically display an artifact known as anisotropy, which can simply be explained as echogenicity of the structure going from very bright to dark based upon the angle of the ultrasound means impacting the tightly bound tendon fibers. In a normal knee, the tendon would attach to the patella, highlight in orange. However, in this patient, there appears to be another area of echogenicity where the tendon attaches. I have highlighted this additional echogenicity in red. This one view allows a presumptive diagnosis to be made, which we will cover after we review the remainder of the images. Now that we have covered basic anatomy, take another look at an ultrasound video to appreciate all the structures that we just covered. This video starts more proximal on the thigh and slides distally as the video progresses. Once again, we are in a long axis orientation. The infusion deep to the quadriceps tendon is once again visualized. However, we now visualize some subtle echogenicity in the joint effusion. That echogenicity is better appreciated on this view, perpendicular to the long axis view of the femur with the ultrasound placed just superior to the patella. The layering echogenicity is likely consistent with hemarthrosis with the dense blood settling towards the bottom of the effusion. To help with anatomy identification, the quadriceps tendon is highlighted in blue and the more echogenic portion of the effusion representing hemarthrosis is highlighted in green. Given the abnormalities noted on ultrasound, these findings were compared to the radiographs of the patient's knee. This is a representative image showing the pathology as well. A density just superior to the patella is identified, the same structure we visualized on ultrasound. This density represents an avulsion fracture which hopefully you were able to identify in the previous image. The cross tabral lateral also provides another view of the pathology in a different orientation. With the avulsion fragment again identified, I think it's interesting to see the pathology and how it presents on the different imaging modalities. This abnormality represents a patellar sleeve fracture. It's a rare injury that is usually only seen in pediatric patients where there is separation of the cartilage sleeve from the ossified patella. It is most common in 8 to 12 year olds where the ossification of the patella is near complete. Given the injury, orthopedics was consulted and the patient was placed in knee immobilizer and urgent clinic follow-up was arranged. The patient underwent an MRI which confirmed the diagnosis. Given the fact that his extensor mechanism was not intact, he did require surgery, which was uneventful. As you can imagine, there is a prolonged postoperative course with bracing and extension with gradual return to full activity. I think this case exemplifies the ability of ultrasound to image soft tissue musculoskeletal injuries, especially when many of us don't have MRI easily accessible for non-emergent conditions. While this injury did have an abnormality on plain radiographs, many tendon injuries do not, and tendon injuries are something that is often suspected in the emergency department, but very seldom confirmed given the fact that MRIs are not often obtained emergently. As a final refresher of knee anatomy, I wanted to give this example of a knee with a joint effusion yet no other pathology. The patella and femur are shown along with the quadriceps tendon, which you should now feel comfortable identifying. Both the suprapatellar fat pad and the prefemoral fat pad are shown with a moderate sized joint effusion present in the suprapatellar recess. Additionally, while our case shows a rare patellar sleeve fracture, I wanted to give you a view of what a tendon rupture looks like on ultrasound. This video shows an Achilles tendon, which hopefully you can now identify based on our previous discussion. 
The tendon is highlighted in blue. The image on the left shows the Achilles tendon inserting at the calcaneus, represented by the echogenicity highlighted in orange. The image on the right shows the more proximal tendon disruption with the linear tendon fibers abruptly ending in an area of hypoacosty representing a small hematoma. This example shows how tendon tears can be identified, and I have personally scanned a decent number of Achilles, quad tendon, and patellar tendon tears in clinical practice. This type of case is somewhat unique to be presented as an ultrasound case of the month because I often attempt to find cases in which ultrasound significantly alter care in some way. In this case, the treatment providers very easily could not have employed ultrasound and the care would not have changed any major degree. There was enough on the x-ray and the exam to engage a specialist and obtain appropriate care and follow-up. However, the team diagnosed the patient within minutes of his arrival by utilizing ultrasound. Additionally, I think that ultrasound provides a picture that is really worth a thousand words in helping understand the rare injury and what is going on in the knee. And as I mentioned previously, ultrasound allows the ability to diagnose many soft tissue injuries which would not be possible unless obtaining an MRI, which is often not feasible in many practice environments. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the case. Feel free to comment below.